on to the main story of the day. And at 3.30 this afternoon, the Prime Minister is going to stand up on his hind legs in the House of Commons and tell the country what he's going to do about the report published today into the contaminated blood scandal. Now, for those who don't know, this is a horrifying injustice that went on for decades between the 60s and the 80s, in which people who needed help to clot their blood, so haemophiliacs, accident victims, mothers in labour, things like that, they were given clotting agents, uh, blood products, imported cheaply from the US, taken originally uh, in return for a few bucks from, well, you know, people who were basically, you could probably describe them as bums on Skid Row, right? Prisoners, people who, who needed a few bucks for a pint of blood and didn't really care. So those products were infected with lots of bloodborne diseases. They were not screened properly. They were the cheapest blood products on the market. They were rife with HIV, with because um, a lot of people who were giving uh, blood were prisoners or who were um, were living on the streets. Um, they were contaminated with the hepatitis C and so on and so forth. Now, there's one quote I want to read quickly before we go into our first question, which is from Jason Evans. So he leads the sort of the Factor 8 campaign. As it's known, Factor 8 was the name of the blood product that was used. Uh, and his dad was infected with HIV as a result of the scandal. And as a result, his mum was sacked from her job. And this is indicative of the of where society was at the time this all started coming out, right? Remember the AIDS and the epidemic in the 80s and the, the horrifying um, fear that we were all given about contracting AIDS. So this is what the owner of the bakery told the local paper when the family complained about it. Mr. Vern Shelton, owner of the bakery and cake shop in Church Street, defended his decision saying there was always the chance that Mrs. Evans could become infected with AIDS in the future. I know at the moment the disease is dormant in her husband, but he could contract it at any time and pass it on to her, he said. He said his staff were understandably worried about the situation and the possibility the disease could be spread by blood if Mrs Evans accidentally cut herself while washing up. We have food around. I feel this is the wrong sort of place for Mrs Evans to work. It could have been a real hazard. So there you have someone who is not infected by the blood scandal, but has been affected. She's been fired. She's been ostracised. Her family have suffered the loss of an income and she, her plight has been in the local paper. So the chances of her being able to get a new job when she is, you know, the AIDS wife is going to be significantly less. Um, Steve says that these people deserve apology, compensation, accountability. One should follow another. Um, it's kind of horrifying what happened to so many people you there's the affected and the infected and they're two different people sophie do we know what sunak's going to say this afternoon has there been a kind of pre-briefing to journalists to, to say well he's gonna accept the report in full and do x y z i mean yes that's what we're hoping we're, we're expecting an apology and we're expecting announcements around a proper compensation package over the weekend um there was talk of it being expected to be around 10 billion pounds as you say this is people who have been infected but also affected um i mean you listen to these stories and like the one that you just read susie this not only were the experiences horrific but the fact that this has been dragged on for so long you know these you know more than thirty thousand people in the uk were infected with hiv and hepatitis c after having these contaminated blood products in the 1970s to 1990s, you know, between then, we're in 2024 now, mm -hmm. you know, many of these people have passed away, many people have died without justice. Um, this is, as you know, politicians and campaigners and everyone said, this is the worst scandal, health scandal that we've ever seen in the NHS, you know, and there's, uh, when I was listening to, to some of the campaigners speak over the weekend and they said, do you still have hope? Do you still have hope that when this report comes out that it will finally give the answers? Because for so long they've expected answers and they've hoped today will be the day. Today will be the day and they are constantly let down. And, you know, they, they've said that actually the report's author, Sir Brian Longstaff, has really, really made the effort to keep the victims at the heart of this and that's what we hope to happen today we hope that rishi sunak he will make that genuine apology on behalf of governments you know governments and governments and governments that have not acted on this scandal governments that at the time were aware that there were issues with blood on behalf of doctors on behalf of nurses on behalf of all those who are administering 
place because there was this sense of cover up. There was, you know, and he's taking the effort. This is going to be a huge report. Um, there are journalists who will be looking at the report earlier on before it comes out, getting together all the detail um, to make sure that everyone, the public, the victims, the doctors, everyone knows what has happened here. We get the true answers and the truth um, of, yeah, the biggest scandal that we've seen in the health service. Now, this inquiry was set up seven years ago. Now, for ease of reference, that is four prime ministers, everybody. Um, Sunak himself gave evidence to the inquiry last July about an interim compensation payment that had been ordered by the inquiry chair, but which was delayed on his watch as Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now, he told the inquiry he recognised that while the historic wrong is over, the hurt continues. Um, but he was jeered by those who were watching when he said that the right and proper way to handle compensation was to wait until after the inquiry. Um, now, Mike says, is there a chance the PM could announce any financial compensation will begin early next year, i.e. leave the next government to pick up the bill? Whatever he announces at this stage, Mike, is the next guy's picking up the bill because it's not going to be Sunak. You know, we're now there. We're at the end of this inquiry. The money has to be found. There's some suggestion over last week that that money wasn't going to, there was going to be no payment until something like September. Um, but there is... Because of the delays, because the interim payments that were ordered were not paid, um, there is a bit less money that has to be found, isn't there, Sophie? Because that delay means that more victims have simply died. There is one victim dies every four days. And I think that I do quickly do the maths on how many that is over seven years. But they simply don't have to pay out as much because they've waited longer. Well, we're hoping that we can emphasise that affected, these affected people, and that there are going to be mechanisms within the funding packages and the compensation package to compensate families as well to those affected. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Like we said, over this time, thousands of people have died without getting any justice. And we've seen this. We see it across scandal after scandal. You, we've seen it so much in the news with the post office scandal now. You see it, that this delay, you know, it's this is people's lives that we're talking about. Some people will not get to see the end of justice with this. And especially mm. with the health scandal, we're talking, these people are, are on, you know, limited time because of the scandal itself. I mean, we're hoping to get details of the compensation package as early as Tuesday, as in Rishi Sunak will announce parts of it today, but those proper broken down details. Um, it's meant to include life-changing sums of money to the worst affected um, victims, um, and with payouts to sibling, children, parents, um, it's supposed to be, as far as we know, subject to a five week consultation. Um, so there's a hope that that can all get happen quickly because again, as I say, we see this time and again, with bureaucracy and tick boxing and handing from department to department. Um, you know, departments of health and social care, they weigh in and you've got the treasury and you've got the independent report and you've got the sign off from the prime minister and all these different sorts of things. Um, I mean, Jeremy Hunt, the chancellor, said that he would rubber stamp any um, compensation package. He's there from the Treasury's point of view to tick it off. We've had Labour say if they do get into to government, that they will continue that, that nothing will change under there. Because then you, you also do have that aspect that sometimes things are ticked off and you get a new government come in and that can delay things. But they've said no, that it's going to be a swift process. It's going to all carry on, um, which is great to see that, you know, I think today we'll have one of those unique days where actually the whole House and the House of Commons and MPs from across parties will all be in unity on this issue, as they rightly should be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we just we can only hope that now, that now for once, after all of these years, that we, we do not have to talk about delay any further. Hmm. Now, uh, on Twitter, Jim says, what with this and the potential post office reparations, Rwanda, railways, water, various Brexity things, the outgoing robber government is doing its best to store up financial problems to sabotage its replacement. That this is something that is just being used as a political tool against a future Labour government. Um, Jagdish says it's not Rishi Sunak's failure, that of many governments over decades. It's got to be said, when he stands up uh, and issues the apology, um, everyone, you know, everyone accepts this scandal happened, that it was wrong. There's no 
quibbling about it anymore, though there was for a long time. Everyone accepts that the cover-up happened, that medical records were falsified, which is a criminal offence, that unethical experiments were carried out on victims, that patients weren't informed, people were given hep C, HIV, goodness knows what else, and it's affected their entire families, their partners, their children, um, people, other people got infected, families suffered. The compensation was always, always nailed on from the start, which is why Sir Brian Langstaff was suggesting interim payments, because yeah. it actually reduces the final bill. You start paying out a bit now, right? You've got less to find at the end, haven't you? He's doing instalments almost. Um, the inquiry chair kept ordering these interim payments. and They just didn't materialise. They don't, even now, they don't cover everybody that's affected. Um, and when the Prime Minister stands up, he's going to read out a statement concocted by the lawyers and the special advisors, and it'll make him sound very magnanimous. And as Jagdish said, wasn't me. It was a historic sin that I'm going to be recognising the suffering and I didn't cause it, but I'm going to make it all better. Rishi's here for it. Dam says, I question if this will be used as an attack on Labour's ability to care for people in the country just in time for the election season. Some of this did happen under Labour governments, but there were more Tory governments because there's always more Tory governments than there are Labour. Um, but this apology that's going to be uttered today you know, when there is a huge institutional scandal like this, when it happens, there's always one clear person to blame. All right. And people always say, well, who is it? There's so many governments and so many people. And, you know, a National Health Trust, an NHS Trust here and some in the Department of Health there and a civil service. Who, who can you possibly blame? They all, so many people and they all think they've done the right thing. The original sin might be a long time ago. but The person in ultimate charge has the responsibility. And from the day that Sue Douglas in the Mail on Sunday and Caroline Wheeler in the Sunday Times exposed all this, the day the person who is in charge of fixing that is the prime minister of the day, whoever that is, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody who is in charge, and when there are newspapers dropping with scandal and evidence and proof and medical records, when people are talking about going to the police, the prime minister, the person in Downing Street and there's been several in Downing Street since we've got to that place in this scandal, that person has had the responsibility to settle and sort and fix and apologise. And we've had multiple prime ministers who, even knowing about this, have not done so. Jeremy Hunt as an MP a decade ago. No, sorry, that was about the post office. But um, he, they've all had constituents coming to them saying, I've got a problem. And they said, oh, I'll try and fix it as your MP, but then done nothing about it when they're in government. Mm -hmm. Everyone who didn't settle this, and that includes Rishi Sunak, Right, has to bear a proportion of the blame for the death, mm -hmm. the injustice, the failure of the institutions that they actually lead to recognise that the wrong, the moment it was proven years ago, right at the start, not seven years after the inquiry finally reports back, because the inquiry wasn't into whether something had gone wrong. OK, the inquiry was set up because everybody agreed something had gone wrong. There were criminal offences that had been proven. And rather than go to the police, they set up a public inquiry. That was how it came about. So you wait until the end of the public inquiry is not seven years. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's, that's led to the inquiry it's reporting back. You've had post office, you've had LGBT veterans. They've been dragging their feet and compensation for all of them, this government which is why some people are thinking that it's almost a political strategy. It's got echoes as well of the new blood scandal that affects nuclear veterans whose blood tests and whose medical records seem to be missing from their time at nuclear weapons trials during the Cold War. It's very, very easy for the British state to just throw up a wall and say, wait for the inquiry. But what about all those people who can't wait because they're dying or they're already dead? Um, it's, a, it's a stupid question in a way, Sophie. I know the answer to this. Is Rishi Sunak in his apology, going to say, hands up, it's partly me. I mean, as you say, I think we know. I think we know now. I, I think it, we will see the statement very soon. I think it's probably unlikely. But I guess what we hope is that we get that accountability where he says the governments, where he says the state, where he at least, as prime minister right now, as you say, prime minister of the day, he has that ability to take responsibility and accountability for the state's mistake. And if he can actively say, you know, politicians, the people in this parliament, wherever, whatever year, whoever was here, standing at this dispatch box, standing behind me, in the government side, on the opposite side, wherever, we have failed people. We have failed people. I think we just want that, that accountability is this said this is one of the biggest parts of justice you know right. i mean and i've spoken to the victim commissioner a lot of times she obviously deals with all sorts of 
all sorts of cases. And, you know, there are several different things that victims want. In some cases, it might be they want prison. But in all cases, they want that sense that the people who have done wrong know that they have and they put up their hands and they take responsibility yeah. and accountability. And Rishi <laughs> Sunak, as prime minister, as the person in number 10 right now, he has the power to take responsibility for the state. And we hope that we will see him do that today. But it was that was why he was jeered at the public inquiry. It's because he was saying, I'm not taking responsibility. I'm not paying it right now. You've got to wait until you force me to take responsibility by the finding of public inquiry. And it's worth just pointing out before we move on to the good news that um, Andy Burnham, as health minister, was one of those who bears a proportion of the blame, if I'm right, uh, which is that he refused to meet contaminated blood victims for quite a long time. And he believed his officials when they said to him that there was no scandal here and nothing had gone wrong. It was only when he was persuaded to sit down and meet them and see that their medical records had been proven that he sort of had his Damascene moment went, oh, my God, what what's happened? And then on his last sort of day as an MP, he stood up and had an adjournment debate. He was told the powers of parliament about um, the evidence of crimes being committed against these people and demanded a public inquiry and got it. It was um, it was established as a result of what he was talking about. And when Andy Burnham gave evidence at the public inquiry, he said really clearly, I feel appalling. I, I am partly to blame. I didn't listen. I should have mm. done. This could have been ended sooner. I, I will regret to my dying day that I didn't do it on my watch. And Andy Burnham got a standing ovation. Mm. And you don't get that at public inquiries very often. Right. But the reason that you get jeered at public inquiries is because you're not taking responsibility and saying this is all someone else, but I can't afford to pay it. And the reason you get a standing ovation is when you go, I, it, should have, it, sh it should have been me. I should have fixed this everyone should have fixed it up to now and we have to take responsibility and accountability and just being honest and open and mm. that's what gets the round of applause from people i'm not entirely sure sunak's going to get that today but we'll have to see later on thank you for that sophie mm.